Hello everyone, Happy New Year, welcome back. This is KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Gotta give you an update to the satellite tracker here and where I'm currently at. Now, doing this outside here for, it's a little chilly out here, but I'm doing it for two reasons. One, I'm starting to lose a little bit of room in my little bedroom thing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a mess in there. But also this is where it's, this is how it's gonna be set up outside. Okay, I think the physical build is just about done. I'm going to go through and show you again what I have here right now um, and explain what I did. Now, this is not, again, this is not my uh, design. Elwood, uh, you know, created this, and I, I changed a couple things compared to what he did. The plans are online. You can look in the links in the description and see about this. For those who don't know, this is an autonomous uh, Arduino-controlled, well, this model is the Arduino-controlled, uh, satellite tracker and what that'll do is instead of you know there's satellites ham satellites out uh, up in space and instead of me holding a handheld or a radio in one hand and the antenna in the other and trying to aim at you know uh, a satellite passing by this will make it a lot easier to do that because it's going to with servos and computer programming automatically going to track you know the thing is going to uh, the servo is going to move by itself. It's going to find the azimuth and elevation of the passing satellite, which is moving like 14,000 miles an hour. So what I did here, uh, I'll go through this again real quick and show you. I think the build is just about done. It's going to be programming now. Um, to start on the top from my previous videos, the difference here is now I'm using the ELK log periodic uh, antenna. And this is a dual band log periodic it happens to be a lot lighter. The elements are not here yet. I mean, they're, they're, I have them, they're not on yet. Um, I'm just putting that on there to see. And the log periodic is a lot lighter than the Yagi. Now, can you use a Yagi or Arrow? Sure, I'm just, I chose, you know, I thought the high gain was gonna work. The high gain was a little heavy. Even though I was in my backyard with the high gain and I made several contacts, um, it's a little heavy and this thing breaks down to nothing. This even, this boom will come off and I can put all the elements and everything in a little bag, okay? So there's the log periodic. now. The PVC I'm not sure of yet. The original design by Elwood, he had um, this tilt servo not mounted right on the elevation uh, or uh, azimuth servo. He had it mounted, there was a pole or a little pipe, you know, uh, what do you call it for the servo, you know, robotics, whatever, is part of this. It was uh, like an aircraft aluminum little mast that came up. And then he mounted the tilt servo here. Then he put the antenna on top of it. Now I didn't do that. And this may still not work, but what I tried to do was keep it as light as possible um, and keep this antenna to where it will tilt back and not be so heavy. Now I gotta see what kind of torque this servo has. It may still be too heavy and I'll have to come up with a new solution. But with that height right there, if it comes down, it's not going to clip the back of this if it was to be a straight up you know, uh, pass there. Now coming down from here, we have um, the, and, and by the way, I'm gonna, tell you, I wanted this to be designed or, you know, uh, disassemble this thing if I wanted to and put it in a backpack. For instance, the antenna to here is one piece. Okay, it's one. This tilt servo and all of this to this Sony tripod thing is piece two. So this is one piece, right? This is one piece. And then the tripod down here with this box mounted on it is the third piece. That should break down into three pieces where I can take that thing portable. Um, so down here we have the servos, okay, and uh, the PVC that's screwed right to the uh, tilt servo. But what you'll see here, and I'll turn this, what I decided to do was I used a project enclosure here. I screwed the project enclosure to the C channel like this, you can see. I only have a couple screws. And what I could do is I could unscrew this one and this one, you know, all of them, whatever, and pull this bottom off. That's where all, you can see there, that's where all the wires are going into. You have the azimuth and elevation control wires that are going into there. And you also have your nine degrees of freedom sensor here. Okay, and, and that's hot glued on there. Let, might I add, everything in this box is hot glued. And man, that Gorilla Glue, I, I, I didn't own a hot glue gun, so I decided to get one. And I didn't want it to be super glue permanent, but I didn't want it to be screwed on. I wanted it to be where I could get it off, but it's clean enough. I mean, that's... That's hot glued on there and it's it's not going anywhere. Now this is your up, down, left, right, you know, orientation, accelerator, gyrometer, whatever you want to call it. That detects what's up, what's down, what's, you know, 180 degrees and so on. 
That is connected temporarily right now with a breakaway because again, if I wanted to take you know, um, this thing apart, I could disassemble this without cutting wires and doing all that. Now the sun's coming out, I'm gonna back this up in a minute. Okay. Um, so that's the, you know, and that will, that will move all the way. It's not, you know, it's got enough wire there. And again, Elwood decided to put that up here and you could do that, but there's a couple things you need to know. This board here needs to be, you know, um, the short side needs to be parallel with the boom, which it is. Um, it also needs to have the connections facing the back and all the surface mount devices up. So I, ha I met those three criteria. That's how it's mounted. Um, so those are going to go in this box. Now, again, if I, if I flip this, right, and I open this and pop this whole top section off, what would happen with the cable? Well, I'll show you. Check it out. This is what I did also on this box. <clears throat> I decided to mount an RJ45 here for the signaling from the Arduino to the servo controller in this box, okay? And the reason I did that, and I did the same thing down here, you know, I could take that cable right off if I wanted to. Um, the reason I did that was because, you know, I wanted it to be a modular design where I could take it apart. This cable here is running only the six volts to these servos. Now, I could have done everything over this. And I think, in fact, L would use serial port, which would have worked. But I wanted to make sure I had enough current to the servo motors, which is the six volts. It's five volts to the servo controller and the little sensor and stuff. It's six volts for these motors because they have a little bit of torque to them. So what I did, instead of using the RJ45 here to try to handle uh, an amp or two through those little tiny pins, I used that only for signaling, up, down, left, right, go this way, go that way. And I used this separately for the six volt to drive the power motors. Now, you can see down here what I did was, Here's the other side, you know, RJ45 and power poles. So here's your six volts coming out right here, feeding only the power, and this is feeding the signaling. And I put a little bit of wire loom to try to keep it neat. Now, like I said, I could pop this whole thing off, one P, you know, this, this will be one section here if I wanted to, and that's that. So continuing on, and by the way, it's not easy to cut out squares, you know, in a project box like this here. You know, with a file, cut out squares and hot glue. But man, that hot glue is something else. That Gorilla Glue is great. Now, this whole thing is powered by the BioNO. I chose the 6 amp hour. Now, when I did that, I didn't realize that it wouldn't fit in this box. And I'm going to tell you what's in this box here in a second. It did not fit in the box. So, I had two, two options. Do I send it back and get the 3 amp, which would be half of this. This is half of my 12 amp. And... A three amp would be half of this, it would have fit. I said, you know, no, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna take this somehow, whether I keep it like this, whether I mount it to another leg, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, we'll figure it out. But that's the start of the power source. This power pole here with the 12 volts is going to, I gotta route one more cable in to this. And I'm gonna, let me take this cover off because this doesn't need to be here. It's just a waterproof cover, but let me take it off so you don't have a glare. Okay, now we see what we're doing without a glare. So the 12 volts is going to come from this battery. I'm going to route one more cable in to the, I have a power pole splitter here, and this is a Chinese one, the Ching Swa, whatever it is. So 12 volts in here, and that's going to pretty much, you know, split this here. I have one 12 volt coming out to a 12 volt to five volt DC converter. That's one. I have another one coming out, 12 volt to six volt DC step down converter. And I have a 12 volt out to the Arduino right here, okay? And that's, you now the Arduino you can power with 12 volts, five volts on a pin here, a USB five volt. I chose to feed it with the little barrel connector for 12 volts. Um, coming off of this, we'll get to this, okay. So that's, that's those. Now I have two more ports here if I wanted. Uh, so come, starting here, coming off the, uh, breakout here we're going to a 12 to 5 volt converter that's on amazon links in the description in a previous video hot glued on as well not you know not really permanent but man it's solid now that the only thing i haven't finished or figured out yet is this i, I soldered some wires together and just taped them and hot glued them i didn't want to add another terminal strip i'll figure out what to do with that so that's all my five volts coming off here we have one five volt going to the rj45 for the signaling to feed the servo controller and stuff we have one five volt going up here to the GPS breakout. 
and we have one five volt that I've spliced on a micro USB to feed the battery powered TP-Link router. Now this TP-Link router is because I had that laying around, you could use the one that I originally said in the plans or that El Elwood did. I just chose that because it's sitting there, it's cool. It's a battery powered router. Ethernet in, you know, from the Arduino ethernet and now it becomes a Wi-Fi hotspot. You could also use that thing with 3G, 4G USB sticks, you know, stuff like that. So it doesn't at this point matter that it's got a battery in it, but it, whatever, it, it's there, I had it, that's five volt there. So that's your five volt section going there. Now off the 12 to six volt, again, the only place that's going is right to the servo motors for the six volt for the higher current draw, okay? Um, the Arduino is fed on 12 volts, the GPS breakouts fed on five. And I tried to, I, I know what my color coordinated is, you know, with the transmit and receive green and orange and stuff like that. Um, and the ham radio concepts way of doing it is to drill holes in the back of this <laughs> and zip tie it to the legs of the tripod. That's a silly way of doing it. But so that's really what I have there. So in the original plans, you know, I think he had a external, you know, he had this mounted with holes so you could plug right into it. I'm going to assume that once I load the sketches and code to this thing, I shouldn't really have to plug into it at all. And if I do, it's a couple screws. I take off, I plug right in on USB, whatever. Um, so that's as neat as I could possibly make it without being as creative as I'm not, because I'm not a creative type person. Um, and if I have to add anything else, you know, like a solar panel or something, I can do that. So this battery, you know, and, and this thing's not going, you know, staying permanent. I could just lay this battery like this, plug in a power pole when I'm done, take the battery out and use this battery for something else another radio or something instead of having to designate it only to this tracker because that battery is going to run this tracker for days. That's a big, long capacity battery. Um, so again, these, this, this Sony tripod is very, very sturdy. All the links to what I used are in description in the previous video. Um, the legs aren't even out all the way yet. This thing will go up way higher. Also, I can use the crank here and I can crank. Let me see if I can do this here. I can crank up and down. See? Going up down you know um, and module where I can take the whole thing apart in different sections you know and try to fit it in the backpack whatever that's where I'm at right now uh, in the next video I'm going to try to update you um, because you know months ago I started this and fell out of it people said wow you suck <laughs> you bought all these maybe buy all these parts you know we want to see this tracker well it is it does exist you can see right here it's not vaporware it is actually coming along um, and hopefully when I get my 9700 outside hooked up to this, I can work sideband birds. I can focus on the 9700 ICOM with all those bells and whistles for satellite without having to worry about holding an antenna, you know? That's what this thing is really gonna be impressive. And even, you know, pack it for the space station and FM birds, satellite, uh, you know, sideband birds, whatever. Uh, we can do it with this tracker here. And I'll keep you updated as to what I am changing or what has changed or how it's working. And uh, I hope you enjoyed so far where this thing has come along. 7-3 guys, KJ4YZI.